I named the ship Titanic. May God bless her and all who sail in her. this, Sylvia. The new White Star liner, RMS Titanic, is the largest vessel in the world. It is not only in size, but also in the luxury of her appointments that the Titanic takes first place among the big steamers of the world. By the provision of Vinolia Otto toilet soap for her first class passengers, the Titanic also leads as offering a higher standard of toilet luxury and comfort at sea. Let me see. For the first class passengers, Mark, you the rest don't wash, of course. <laughs> Excuse me, sir, but are you a foreigner? Me? Eh? Or a radical, perhaps? I ask because my wife and I find your sneering remarks in bad taste. What's that? Let those who wish to belittle their country's achievements do so in private. Every Britisher is proud of the unsinkable Titanic. Yes, indeed. I'm sure my husband would agree with you. He's going to join the Titanic as her second officer. <clears throat> I, uh, I apologize. Misunderstanding, of course. Oh, of course, madam. Soap is no laughing matter. It was the suggestion of criticism. Of the advertisement, sir, not the ship. Uh, quite so. You're joining her at Liverpool, I take it? No, sir. Belfast. Then we sail down to Southampton. Ah, uh, how I envy you. The newspapers say she's a veritable floating city. Symbol of progress. Of man's final victory over nature and the elements. 800 cases shelled walnuts, Titanic? Yes. 3,000 dozen fresh eggs, Titanic? Yes. It's all Titanic, this. All Titanic. 250 five pound jars, beluga caviar. 2,000 pounds of jam, strawberry. 2,000 pounds of jam, green gauge. Definitely not the veal. But we'll take the rest, subject to inspection. Goodbye. The final passenger list for the Titanic, sir. How many first class? 332, sir. 276 second. 708 steerage. Uh, total with crew? 2,208, sir. More than half the steerage join at Cherbourg and Queenstown. There we are. That's eight wardrobe trunks, 
Ten suitcases, 18 pieces in all. They're ready. Mm -hmm. Ready, sir. Thank you. Well, goodbye, sir. I hope you have a pleasant journey. Thank you very much. Are you sure you're warm enough? Yes, thank you. All right, Perkins. Now, children, here they come. Show Sir Richard and her ladyship how much we respect them. kids, making sure of their Christmas turkey from the home farm. Goodbye, darling. Goodbye. You won't forget to write to me, will you? We'll send you a wireless oh, from the ship. Do take care of my little one. Thank you, Father. You'll all come back when your fortunes are made. We will that, Father. What will you do with the horse and car? Uh, I'll sell them in Queenstown before we get on the ship. Well, get a good price, Tom. They're sharp in Queenstown. Don't worry, Father. I'll watch me step. Don't grieve, Mrs. Farrell. It's the wise thing your husband is doing. Can I help you up, miss? Thank you. That's very kind of you. Oh. 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 You think they'll promote you to first officer after this trip, Bertie? Well, that depends whether they keep old Wild on or not. After all, you were first on the Majestic. Ah, but that was temporary. Don't you mind? No. Bill Murdoch's the one with his nose out of joint this trip. Ambitious fellow is Bill. So are you. You know you are. Well, I'd rather be second in the Titanic than first, or even chief in any other ship. With me, madam, it's the honor of serving the company, and to hell with the pay. Language? Or would you like me to bring you back from New York? Nothing you couldn't buy better or cheaper over here. Ah, but there is. Garters. Ladies silk garters with big frilly bows. There's a shop on Broadway full of them. Just in from Paris. Blue ones, pink ones, scarlet. <laughs> Oh, what's the matter? The idea of you buying garters with big frilly bows on them. <laughs> <laughs> the idea of you wearing them. Oh, oh, oh la la. Oh. <laughs> now, Bertie, look at the time. It's late, oh. and, and you have to get down to the ship. Good morning, sir. Good morning, pilot. I understand the engine right wheel has been tested. Captain. Yes, sir. Yes, they have. Thank you, sir. Well, there should be quite a welcome waiting for us in New York, too. It'll be a proud moment for you, Mr. Chairman. Oh, and for you, Andrew. <laughs> You're the man who built her. You're the one who ought to take the bows. <laughs> I'm only the office boy. We should arrive, uh, let's see, a Wednesday morning. Oh, we might do better than that. Not out for a fast run this trip, are you? Oh, no, no, no. Nothing like that. You'll do better when the engines have settled down. <laughs> yes. Oh, naturally, Captain, you'll use your own judgment. Uh, I'm just an ordinary passenger on this trip. Mr. Murdoch. Oh, Andrew. Get them into stations and let me know when the gangway's landed, will you? All right, sir.
he? Steady as a rock. That's remarkable. <laughs> Of course, the sea's dead calm at the moment. All the same, Captain, dead calm or not. There are lots of other ships that'll be rolling anyway. That's perfectly true. As you say, sir, she's as steady as a rock. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. Someone must have jogged the tape. <laughs> That's all right. That's all right. Got any more sugar there? Get them. What is it? More ice warnings from steamers ahead, sir. One from the America and another from the Baltic. Hmm. Just south of Cape Race. Them then pack ice come that far south before, sir. It's been a mild winter up in the Arctic. This ice must be drifting down on the Labrador current. Well, our passengers aren't in any hurry. Wouldn't be with us if they were. Messages for the captain. Oh, very good, Sparks. Would you see you get them right away? Certainly. Excuse me, sir. From the wireless room. Thank you. Excuse me. Ice warnings from steamers ahead of us. Excuse me. Serious? Oh, we shall keep a sharp lookout. Hear it? That's the Titanic. What's she saying? Best wishes to Joe and Hattie. See you Wednesday. Love, Minor and Bill. Private stuff. Mm. Yes, there must be a lot of money in that ship. They've been at it for the best part of the day. Float ice. By 200,000 rand, market price opening Monday. This chap's spending a fortune. Well, what have you got there, Sparks? Titanic on her maiden voice, says she's working Cape Race. Yeah. How far away is she? It's hard to tell. Mm. Signal strength's pretty good. About 50 miles back, I should think. Get this off to all ships, will you? From SS Californian, ice reports. Oh, well, now that's enough of that. Give us something livelier. Give us a jig now, I'll wish us. Yeah, yeah. You like You care to dance? Dance! Oh, Mama, too much. Oh, it's only a dance. Come on now. Come on.
Sí. Good evening. Leadville Johnny, they call him. And he was the best gold darn gold miner in Colorado. Fifteen I was when I married him. Really? Mm-hmm. And he didn't have a cent. Well, three months later, he struck it rich. And we was millionaires. You know what he did? Yeah. He built me a house. And he had silver dollars cemented all over the floors of every room. I say, how very thousand for you. I've sent off as much as I could, John. But the purser's office kept sending up more. Here he is again. Good evening. Sorry, Mr. Phillips. From the Titanic at sea, wish you were here. Blimey. Well, how's Cape Race working, eh? Well, a lot of repeats. It's not too bad. Well, there was an ice report from the Californian. We went to the bridge. All right. Oh, no peace for the wicked, eh? Couple sparks? Certainly not. Good night. Good night. <clears throat> On course, QM. Aye, eyes up. You sent for me, sir? Ah, yes, Chippy. The temperature's dropping. We don't want to freeze up in the fresh water tanks, so keep an eye on them, will you? Aye, aye, sir. Thank you. Jolly cold. You're warm enough, darling. Let's go back. We ought not to be here anyway. This is first class. They're welcome to it on a night like this. <laughs> Come on. Good evening, sir. Any more ice reports? No, sir. What's the temperature like? It's almost freezing point, sir, and still dropping. In an hour or so, we'll be in the Labrador current. Well, the weather looks clear enough so far. If there's the slightest bit of haze, we shall have to slow down. Let me know at once if you're doubtful. Aye, aye, sir. 
Uh, Mr. Moody? Sir. Call up the lookouts and tell them to keep their eyes skinned for small ice and growlers. There might be some of that about. Make sure they understand. All right, sir. And tell them to pass it on when they're relieved. Yes, sir. Stop engines. Stop engines. Stop engines, sir. That's field ice, Mr. Groves. I'm not trying to find my way around that until daylight. Shall we report it, sir? Yes. Work out our position. Aye, aye, sir. Evans. What other ships are there near? Only the Titanic, sir. Oh. You'll have to call her and tell her we're stopped on account of ice. Mr. Groves will give you opposition when he's worked it out. Great. Order from the bridge. Special watch for small ice and growlers. Right out. I say, you won't drink all the cargo down there, will you? <laughs> I told Chippy to keep his eye on the fresh water. Oh, and the lookouts have been warned to keep their eyes skinned for ice. Uh, I think that's about the lot. I'm off on the rounds. Thanks, Ike. <laughs> You're welcome to it. Good night. Go to my cabin for me, will you please? Yes, sir. Thank you. That'll be brandies for the gentlemen and uh, hock and seltzer for the ladies. Is that correct, sir? Uh, that's right. Now, look here. You're sure about this full speed trial tomorrow? That's what I heard from one of the officers, sir. Uh, I can't guarantee it, naturally. Well, here's somebody who ought to be able to tell us. Hey, Lieutenant. Sir? Uh, good evening, ladies. Uh, have a drink. Oh, thank you, no, sir. I'm on duty. We've decided to win the sweep on the ship's run tomorrow. Now, rumor has it the captain's going to see how fast she can go. Is that right? It's possible. Uh-huh. Now, what would be your guess about the run, Lieutenant? Oh, I don't think I ought to tell you that, sir. Why not? Well, wouldn't you feel worried about betting on a certainty? <laughs> <laughs> Are you sure you won't have a drink? A little later, if I may. Please excuse me. Here, lads. We're trying to find our bunks. Well, you can't come this way. It's the second class. Oh, sorry. No offense, lad. Down to the end, then left. Good evening, sir. Good evening, Stuart. Everything all right? Yes, sir. Good. Can I do anything for you, sir? No, thank you. Winning a lot, is he? Pardon? You know the one I mean. Oh, uh, yes, sir, he is. Ah, thought I'd seen him before. Majestic, I think it was. The name of Rogers, sir. Oh, it was Yates last time. Can they afford to lose? Wealthy gentlemen, sir. Hmm. Well, if you get a chance tomorrow, try and drop them a hint about what they're up against. We don't want any complaints of that sort. I'll do that. Gets the ship a bad name. Gets you a bad name, too. Good night, sir. Good night, sir. Then I'll see you. Flash. Here's our position, as near as I can work it out. Uh, the old man says he gave you the rest of the message. That's right. What's the matter? What's he say? 
He says, keep out. Now he's calling Cape Race again. What's he sending to Cape Race? More private stuff. Some big bug wants his private railway car to meet him in New York. How about that? Well, it's time I signed off and got a bit of shut out. Oh, uh, when I get off watch, I'd like to uh, listen in a bit, all right? You're going to get the code now, are you? Well, one word in three, sometimes. I have to make you second operator. And you can wind up the detector. I'll take you up on that. Hello, Doc. Hello, Lights. What's the matter? Somebody ill? I'm on an errand of mercy. Oh, ho. hope she's not too young for you. Oh, I've got an evil mind. Come in. Hello, Doc. What can I do for you? You can stop working on this grand ship of yours and have a nightcap. Well, I got one here. This is sound medical advice I'm giving you. Come in. What is this? Restaurant galley hot press not working. Alterations needed to the writing room. Too few screws on the stateroom coat hooks. See, this, this ship of yours must be falling to bits. Oh, I like to have things just so. People first, things second. You're very good health, Mr. Andrews. Good health. Go on, get on with it. Aye. There's a big ship coming up to starboard, sir. Uh, how far away is she? Maybe ten miles. Uh, I'd better find out who she is, I suppose. Contact her with the Morse lamp. Right, sir.
What did you see? Iceberg, dead ahead, sir. Iceberg, dead ahead, sir. Out to starboard. Out to starboard, sir. Pull us down, both. Pull us down, both, sir. Close watertight doors. Close watertight doors, sir. Out to starboard it is, sir. Iceberg, sir. I put a hard of starboard and reversed the engines, but she was too close. Stop engines. Stop engines. I splashed my drink. Stuart! Yes, I saw it. Huge thing. Good Lord. You can't see it now, though. You must have just shaved past it. What do you think of this for a souvenir? Where'd you get that from? It's off the Berg. There's tons of it up for it. <laughs> Oh, I'm sorry. Stuart, bring me a whiskey and soda. We've run aground on Cedric. We've run aground on you, found them. That's what we've done. What are you talking about? Oh, shut about? up. You get on a first thing about Stop it. Stop the gamblers and get the fire out of Thanks, mate. I tell you, she's throwing a propeller blade. I was in the old Majestic when the same thing happened. Nah. We'll be going back to Belfast. You see. You've got the pumps working. You get the gang down here and draw the fire. You have! Come on, little lucky lad! All right, lads, oh, come yeah. on. Down again. Come on, Ted. Come on. Get down there, little lad. It's my birthday today as well. Good luck. Ah, come on. Come on, lads. Let's get these bars. Well, there's nothing to see up on deck. I'm going back to bed. Good night. Good night. Oh, what's the trouble? Oh, nothing serious, sir. In a few hours, we'll be on our way again. Yes? Why have we stopped? A bit of trouble, sir. The captain's compliments. Would you please join him on the bridge? No? If you please, sir. She's making water fast, sir. The mail hold's practically full already. Aren't the pumps working? Yes, sir. Thank you, Carpenter. But the engine rooms say they'll need more. They're rigging them now. This is most unfortunate, Captain. Yes, sir. Do you think the ship is seriously damaged? I'm afraid she is. Excuse me. Uh, how long is this likely to delay us? Not long, I You guess. struck a bird. I think she's badly damaged. I'd like to know how badly. All right. I'll go down and have a look. Oh, glory, please. Oh, Come on. Oh, 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 well played, sir. <laughs> I say, let's go down and join the fun. They're steerage passengers.
want to see? No. Chief, I get those men up as soon as you can. Yes, I'll I'll do that, Mr. Andrews. What have we stopped for? Let's talk of an iceberg, ma'am. I expect we've stopped so as not to run over anything. What's up? Oh, we're stopped and blown off steam. Something wrong, I don't know what. I'm a bit of ice, I think. Well, I can't sleep with this racket going on. Do you want me to give you a hand? Oh, I'll finish the Cape Race traffic. Oh. Uh, you can help with the accounts for that. Well, I'll get some clothes on. You think we'll have to turn back? Oh, don't say it. If we do, we won't get a moment's peace in here. Here's a position. Water in the fore peak. Numbers one and two holes. The mail room and boiler room six and five. That means a gash 300 foot long from there to there, below the water line. Do you agree? Yes. Well? The pumps are keeping the water down in this boiler room, but the first five compartments are flooding. Well, what's the answer? She's going to sink, Captain. But she can't sink. She's unsinkable. She can't float. Look, she could float with any three of her first five watertight compartments flooded. She could even float with four of them gone. But she can't float with all five full up. Yes, but... These watertight bulkheads here only go as high as E-deck. The weight of water in the bow is going to pull her down by the head. So you're going to get the fifth watertight compartment overflowing into the sixth, the sixth into the seventh, and so on as she gets lower. It's a mathematical certainty. With that amount of underwater damage, she can't stay afloat. How long will she last? Just trying to work that out now. As far as I can see, she made 14 feet of water in the first 10 minutes after the collision. It's not very fast. She should live another hour and a half. Yes, about that, I think. There must be no panic. No. You'll be careful what you say to the passengers. Of course. How many people are there on board? 2,200 or more. And room in the boats for... How many? 1,200. I don't think the Board of Trade Regulations visualized this situation. Do you? Gentlemen, we are in a precarious position. We must be prepared to abandon ship. Mr. Murdoch, you will muster the passengers. Mr. Lightoller, you will have the boats uncovered and swung out. Mr. Boxall, call all hands and get them to boat stations. Mr. Moody, you will help Mr. Lightoller. And Mr. Wilde and Mr. Pittman will remain on the bridge. Everything will be done quietly and calmly. There must be no alarm and no panic. I will give the word when the boats are to be loaded with the women and children. Carry on, please. Captain! Aren't you exaggerating the danger? I'm afraid not, sir. Well, where's Andrews? I'm acting on his advice. This ship is going to founder. But she can't. In any case, we can't get everyone in the boats. I know that, sir. Please, God, it won't come to that. All right, now listen to me. The ship has been seriously damaged. The captain's ordered the boat swung up. It's got to be done quickly. And... It's got to be done quickly and efficiently. We don't want any panic. If you keep your heads, the passengers will keep theirs. Now, I know you've had no chance for boat drill, but you're all seamen and you've got brains. 
Now's the time to use them. All right, Burston. Yes, sir. Get busy. The ship is badly damaged. Send out the call for assistance. The regulation distress call, sir? Yes, and at once. As soon as you're in touch with the ship nearest to us, tell them to come as quickly as they can. You understand? Yes, sir. That's our position. Yes, sir. About that steamer over there. Who is she? I don't know. I suppose she's in the ice too. She stopped at about seven bells. I tried calling her with the Morse lamp, but she didn't take any notice. Well, me for bed. Right. Good night. Good night, sir. Any luck? Frankfurt, 150 miles away. The Olympics says the Mount Temple's nearer. Well, there must be someone nearer still. Try sending SOS. That's the new call. It may be the only chance you'd ever have. You, sir, but uh, captain's orders. What is it? Uh, there's a little trouble with the ship. Everyone's to put on warm clothing, get their life belts on, and go up on deck. What? It's only a precaution, ma'am. Excuse me, sir. Everybody up, get dressed, get your life belts on at once. Everybody up, get dressed, get your life belts on at once. I say, you get dressed, get life belt quick, savvy, chop, chop. He chopped off, man, it's a chop, chop, chop. They got a lavello in English. Quick, there! Get your life belt, get your life belt, get your life belt, get your life belt, get your Come on, lads, hurry it up. You've had time enough. Don't fold those covers. Mr. Lighter, I must insist. What's in that sack? Bread, sir. Right, chuck it in a boat. This one. Very good, sir. Every boat must be manned by seamen. That's laid down. Everything's in hand, sir. Will you please go down to the lounge? Come along, ship those turning handles. Order. <sighs> Order. Ludzie, ludzie, woda u nas w kabinie. Janek, Janek, no popatrz, co się dzieje, no co za porządki. Come on, get up, we're sinking. Get out of it. Oh, boy. Everybody up! Captain's orders! Why don't you put the light out? Hooligans. Stewardess. Yes, sir? Why aren't you wearing your light belt? Well, the passengers mustn't think I'm scared. Let them see you wearing it. Put it on, child. For your own sake, too. Oh, madam, let me help. Come along. Really, it's too tarsome of him. Everybody knows this ship can't sink. Ah, 
Oh, there you are. Oh, and me sleeping sound for the first time since we left Queenstown. Never mind now, never mind. It'll be cold outside. Where's Pat off to? Hey, hold my bag, will you? Get up top, quick! grow up to look like their mothers. The older one's keener, if you know what I mean. <laughs> I know what you mean. Why don't you try giving them both a miss this trip? And take the mother out. <laughs> she might do worse by the side of it. <sighs> You're heating my blood, I think I'll turn in. Sweet dreams. Good night, Sparks. Who from? The Titanic. They've struck a bird. Yes, the lake, no, they've struck a bird. They want us to come at once. They're sinking. The Titanic? Don't be a fool. It's true. I go to the captain. There's nothing inside. Take over. Ah, sir. Sir! Sir! What the devil's going? Haven't you learned to knock before you come in here? It's a distress call, sir, from the Titanic. She's sinking. I'm sorry, sir. I... Dean, turn the ship round. Head northwest. I'll work the course out for you in a minute. Aye, sir. Now, Cotton. You're sure this is the Titanic? Yes, sir. Certain. Absolutely. All right, check back. Find out everything you can. Tell them we're coming as fast as possible. Yes, sir. Carpathia, eastbound from New York. She's on her way to us. Well, how far away is she? 58 miles, sir. She's making all possible speed. Should reach us in four hours. Four hours? Yes, sir. Well, what about that ship over there? About 10 miles away. You can see a light. Isn't she replying? No, sir. Well, she'd blast our ears off if she did. Maybe she can't keep a 24-hour watch. Maybe she hasn't got wireless at all, sir. All right, Bride, thank you. Mr. Moody. Sir? Tell Mr. Boxall to fire the distress rockets. One every five minutes from the port side. All right, sir. Port side boats all swung out, sir. Shall I fill them? Yes. Put the women and children in and throw her away. Aye, aye, sir. Like a rocket, sir. Yes. I wonder what a ship like that will want a far rocket for. Right, number twenty-two. One, two. <laughs>
Step aboard, please, madam, and I'll pass the children across. What about my husband? I'm sorry, women and children first. Yes, my dear, I think you've ever had. But in a small boat like that, I can't go without my husband. That lady's right. It's absolutely assure you. ridiculous. Kindly help me out of here, please. It can't be helped if she won't go. Now, madam, please. Now, would you be good enough to step into the boat, please, madam? Catch my death of cold? Certainly not. Would you step into the boat, please, madam? Thank you. Eileen! Eileen! Yes? You won't get back on board tomorrow without a pass. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't see what I have my orders, Mr. Stone. The ladies are certainly safer, sir, than on those little boats. The captain's opinion about that is different, sir. Look here, sir. I don't know whether you gentlemen have noticed that, but uh, this ship has gotten quite a list on it now. Whoa. That's not right. Well, I don't suppose <laughs> that's very really serious. You can't sink this boat, that's quite certain. Get a move on. Come on, lads. Come on, move along there. What's the use, Chief? Oh, well, all the pumps in Belfast would never keep that water down. That may be so, but the longer we can keep her afloat, the more lives will be saved. So put your backs into it. Sorry, sir. Sorry. Mr. Andrews. Martins, there's a job for you. Aren't you going up top, sir? Presently. Open up all the spare cabins, take out all the life belts and spare blankets, and get your men to distribute them. The blankets to the boats. Right, sir. I'll see to it at once. Good. Oh, Mr. Andrews. Yes? I'd like you to tell me something. I... I have a wife and three children on board. Just how serious is it? I'm not the panicking kind. The ship has about an hour to live. A little more if some of the upper bulkheads hold, but not much more. Get your wife and children into the boats. Thank you. Oh, Mr. Andrews. I take it you and I may both be in the same boat later. Yes. We may. Oh, this way, madam. This way, please. As quickly as you can. Straight the way down there. Please, will you tell me what's going on, Robert? People have been rushing about and noises overhead. Well, it's very tiresome. We've struck an iceberg and damaged the ship. We may be a day late getting to New York. Oh, that is annoying. And to make matters worse, the the captain's being very fussy and correct. All women and children have to go up on deck and get into the lifeboats. Oh, no. I'm afraid so, dear. But I don't want to wake the children. Is it really necessary? Yes. I think we should do what the captain says. Very well, Robert. We, we must wrap the children up warmly. We can take the blankets off the beds, too. I can deal with Tom if you look after the girls. Yes, all right. Tom. Tom. Come on, old boy. You've got to get up now. Anne? Sorry. Jennifer? There we are. Wake up, darling. There's the boy. Come on! Come on! Up! Quick! Out of it! Quick, lads! The boat head's going! to wear it. But you Everyone. must wear your life jacket. But I dislike it intensely. I, I, oh, tell you I will. Try it on, sister. Yeah. Everyone's wearing them this season. They're the latest thing. Hey, Stuart, cancel my appointment with the hairdresser, will you? Tell her I've gone boating. Yes, your boat, please. Come really, along, I'd please. Rather not Come along, please. Will you let me have them, please? A big one. That's fine. 
quiet. Too many people. Tessa, here, yeah, Tessa, please. I must have my jewels. I must have them there in the safe. I've got a seat here to prove it. With the words going round that the women and children are taking to the boats. You can't go through here. This is not the way to the steerage boat deck. I've told you. Which is the way, then? They'll be opening the lower deck ports when the orders are given. Oh, they will, will they? We'll see about that. I'm going to have to cut down more steam. I'll have to get rid of some of the load, then, sir. Yeah. Well, you can cut the boiler room fans for a start. That'll help. Good. Our thing's up top, sir. Any chance for us? Whatever happens, we've got to keep the lights going. I'll give the word when it's time to go, and then it's every man for himself. But it won't be so bad. They say the Carpathia's on her way to us. Should be here any time now. Well, let's hope they're right, eh, boys? And if any of you feel like praying, you'd better go ahead. The rest can join me in a cup of tea. Cut your heating and hot water. Cut anything you like. I've got to have every ounce of steam you can give me. Aye, aye, sir. All right. Mr. Dean. Sir. Get all hands on deck and prepare to receive survivors. Knock off all routine work. Get your boats ready and swing them out. Rig electric lights down the side of the ship. Open all gangway doors. Hook a block of nine rope in every gangway door. Canvas slings. Get those ready for the engine. Oh, and see that all your side ladders are down. Have you got that? Aye, aye, sir. All right. Quartermaster, telephone the doctor and the chief steward. Ask them to come and see me on the bridge now. Aye, aye, sir. What's the matter with him? Is he blind? That's six rockets she's fired, sir. Yes. Maybe I'd better tell the captain. <whistles> what is it? That big steamer, sir. She's firing rockets. Six up to now. Or perhaps they're company signals of some kind. Call her up with a Morse lamp and ask her. Aye, aye, sir. The captain thinks she must be signaling to another ship about the ice. Looks a bit queer, doesn't she? I'll try signaling her again. As if she's listing. That's because of the angle she's at to us.
if you please, madam. My friend must be put into that boat. We want to stay together. Mr. Andrews, madam, sir. Madam, you must get but in. But I don't see why. Madam, There's please, quite madam, you cannot pick and choose your boat. Uh, get in. Gangway, please. Gangway. I want to go back to bed, Daddy. You're going for a ride in a boat, old son. First they tell us to go up, then they tell us to wait down here. Boats are up top, ma'am. Well, I wish they'd make up their minds. Very sorry, ma'am. This indecision is most bewildering. Yes, ma'am. If there's no danger, why do you want us to put our life belts on? Tell me that, Mike. Now, listen, I'm not here to argue with you. I want everybody with their life belts on. Pat and I have found a way up. Follow me. Where is Pat? He's gone ahead. It's all right. Maybe someone trying to signal, but I can't make any sense out of it. Could be a masthead light flickering, couldn't it, sir? If I had a gun, I'd put a shell into them. Well, well, this way, madam. Quick as you can, please. Yes, right. Straight the way down to the end, please. This way, Alan. That's right. The water's up to E-deck, Follow. There's not much time left. If they won't get in, chuck them in. Right. Keep straight on with the boat deck, then. Well, straight way, on. Now. Thank you. Quickly as you can. Right the way down to the end, please. Please don't come along, in madam. Boat. I'd rather die, I tell you. I've never been in an old boat in my life. No, I can't do it. I shall fall. Oh, no, no. You've got please. to go, madam. So you may as well keep no, quiet. Don't. Off we go, then. Good boy, Major. Through here, now. Come on. Here, I'll say. No sailage up here. This is second class. Oh, it is. Good oh, God, man. Will you let these ladies pass to the boats? Against the rules. I shall lose me job. You'll lose your teeth if you don't shut up. Get off me. Oh, you rat. Come on, quick, before he fetches someone. Look there. Which way to the boats? Any way you like, friend. Any way you like. All roads lead to Rome. This way, Pat. First, Please, Lottie, for God's sake, be brave and go. I'll get a place in another boat. Come on, Lottie, please. Robert, I can't get you. It looks as though we shall have to forego the drive down to Philadelphia and take the train. I can't leave you here, Robert. Cousin Henry won't mind us being one day late, but he'll draw the line at two. I'm not going, Robert. My dear, I never expected to ask you to obey me, but this is one time you must. It's only a matter of form for you and the children to go first. Everyone here will be quite safe. Is that the truth? Certainly it is. If you please, madam, the children will follow. Now, you be good girls. And look after your mother. Yes. There we are. Oh. Goodbye, my dear son. Back. Well clear of the boat. Aye, aye, sir. Stand back. Come on, everybody. Stand back, please. Stand back, please, sir. We're going to work. Stand back. Right. Don't away to get up. Watch your hands, ladies. Keep them well inside the boat. Thank you. Say goodbye. Bye, Daddy. Follow 
somebody pass. Oh, I'm getting chucked out. No, no, let's try this way. Come on. Women and children only. Miss Russell, I thought you'd gone to the boat. My pig, I must have my lucky pig. Well, well, I've had enough. We can settle later, if you like. Yeah, yeah. Later. Maybe he's got an appointment. Maybe he's right. I don't know much about ships, but I'm beginning to think that we're in a tight corner. Then what should we play now, gentlemen? Happy families? She's making 17 knots and should be with us about 3.30. That'll be too late. There may be someone nearer. Keep trying. Yes, sir. I've got your light belt, John. Oh, put it down there, will you? Don't they see us? No, sir. There was a light flashing, but it must have come from their masthead. Quartermaster Row. Sir? Can you send and read Morse? Yes, sir. Then signal and keep signaling. We are the Titanic sinking. Please have your boats ready. Aye, sir. You go along and help with the boats. Yes, sir. Mr. Boxall. Sir? Ask Mr. Wilde where the arms and ammunition are kept. They may be needed later. Yes, sir. What he said, the very uh, get along. Same with you now. Come on. Moi, just go each. Mushes is to mushes. Your boat full, Mr. Lowe? Well, there's some ladies here for the boat, sir. Come along, then, please. Quickly, come along. 
Quickly, ladies, hurry. Come along, please. Go along, you know. Watch your step. Make room for them in the back. Watch your step. But surely they'd let us take just one bag. No, dear. No bag. But there's my trousseau. Everything we have is here. Not quite everything. Hey, we only got one sailor with us. That's not enough to manage this boat. I'm a yachtsman. If you're seaman enough to nip down that lifeline, you can go. Hello? Sir? Let's have that line. Right. Good luck. Please, Rachel, get in the boat. Yes, Mrs. Strauss, you must. I've always stayed with my husband, Colonel, so why should I leave him now? Please, be sensible. We have been living together for many years, Isidore. Where you go, I go. I'm sure nobody would object to an old gentleman like Mr. Strauss going in a boat. I'll ask the officer. No, I will not go before the other man. We stay. Come, my dear. She's right, you see. We'll stay together, too. But she's old. You're young. Please, darling. I can look after myself. We both can. Watch your step. Oh, now, you son. Come on. But, yes. Dad, I'll ask Wait a minute. He can't go. It's women and children only. Of course he can go. He's only 13. All right, son. Go on. You can look after your mother. Now, keep back, please, ladies and gentlemen. Keep back! It's absurd. On the other side, the gentlemen are going in the boats with their ladies. Why on earth we're standing here, I don't know. But... Will there be room in the boats for everybody? Of course there will. <laughs> Somebody just said we had to hang about here. I mean, what are we supposed to do, mate? I don't know. Perhaps you ought to go up top. Sir? Please, sir, where are we supposed to go? There are cigarettes out at once. Don't you know the rules yet? I'll have you on the captain's report. Come on, you two. Out of it. Come on. Oh, on. Get out of it. Please, let me stay in the boat. Let me stay in the boat. 
All officers are requested to report to the chief officer's cabin, sir. Right. No men are allowed in these boats until That's all it. the women are gone. Right, come on, lady. Thank you. you sit down, Captain. Now, Mr. Guggenheim, you really ought to hurry. I'll see your valley knows where you are. Now, this thing's uncomfortable. It hurts. I should really be up top, sir. Uh, my valet sent for my valet. May I go too? Yes, sir. In you go. Uh, room for me? Yes, get in. Evening, ma'am. Uh, I guess this is the best place to be. for damaging the company's property. The lot of you. All right, lads, leave it now and try and save yourselves. Yet, sir. They've got to fire the rest of the rockets. Aye, right, sir. Come along, please, ladies. Quickly now. Come, my dear. It's time for you to go. Goodbye. God bless you. Take care of yourself and Jeannie. <laughs> for lowering. Lower away. There's only about a dozen in there. That boat's supposed to take 40. If they're going to lower them, why don't they put some people in them? Come on, mate. Stand back, sir. That's the last one, sir. No reply to your signals? No, sir. I think the bastards must be asleep. 
Report to Mr. Murdoch. Short-handed. Aye, sir. I don't get through. Will you send this to my sister? The address is on it. Come along, please. Don't forget. Just a minute, sir. A bit pessimistic, aren't you? Sea's freezing. Man won't last long in that. We've drawn a bad hand this time. I've never been a good loser. I intend to get into a boat. And I wish you luck. Nothing fresh, sir. Carpet is coming as fast as she can. The Olympic wanted to know if we were steaming south to meet her, and the Frankfurt keeps asking for more detail. The idiots! They don't seem to understand, sir. It can't be easy, Bob. The engine room's flooding. You won't have power to send much longer. Tell the Carpet. Yes, sir. Tell her to hurry. Yes, sir. I've got blankets piled at every gangway, sir, and we're preparing the smoke rooms and lounges as dormitories. We shall have to regroup the steerage passengers, though. All right. Just a minute. Our own passengers will have to keep to their cabins. It's going to be difficult enough as it is without them out of foot. Will you put stewards in every alleyway and tell them that if I see a... What is it, Cotton? From the Titanic, sir. Her engine room's flooded and she's sinking by the head. Her wireless operator says he won't have the power to transmit much longer. Our captain wants to know how long we'll be. Tell them another two hours.
charge this boat. First morning. sister. You take this and help keep you warm. Oh, no, please. Don't you worry about me. I got plenty of fat. Keep pulling. The officer said to stand by close to the ship. If we stay too close, we'll be caught by the suction when she goes down. You roll with me. One of the ladies can steer. I'm in charge of this boat. Your job's to row. Some of the ladies can help row, too. Can't we, girls? Sure. It'll keep us warm. <laughs> Well, I am. Button up, Skipper. You want rowers? Okay, you got them. Well, Aunt. Thank you. Sorry, only one more lady. You go first. Oh, no. You children waiting at home. No, my Hurry dear. Along, I... Please, ma'am, we haven't got much time. Just down there. Right off turn. Still here, Miss Evans? We'll get you off in the next boat. Thank you. It's going fast now. Are all the boats away? All except the other two collapsibles. Well, there'll be no time to get them in the David. We'll have to try and float them off as she goes down. I need some hands to get them unlashed. Hey, you two, follow me. Shoring timber. Right, two men to each one. Oh, right, Jeff. Yep. What's the use? No one's listening. People don't listen when they're eating, but we play just the same. Isn't that so, sir? They say it helps the digestion. Exactly. That's because it soothes the nerves. Right, number 24. It was uncomfortable. We have dressed now in our best and are prepared to go down like gentlemen. That is so, sir. But surely... If anything should happen to me, I would like my wife to know that I behaved decently. trying to clear two of the collapsible boats. If they succeed, I'm sure there'll be a place for you, madam, in one of them. You see, you can still go. Please, darling. No. We started out together and we'll finish together. Are you married, Mr. Andrews? Yes. 
Yes. And if my wife were here, I think she'd do as I ask. But you have a family? Mm-hmm. That would make a difference, wouldn't it? Perhaps. Then let me give you both some advice. Don't stay on the ship until the end. Put your life belts on and lower yourselves down into the water by the ropes hanging over the side. Don't jump if you can avoid it. When you're in the water, swim away from the ship at once. The boats will stay well clear when she sinks. Thank you. We'll remember. Oh, and uh, I should wear something white so they can see you. I wonder if he'll save himself. We'll save ourselves. <laughs> Now he's forward. All together, heavy. Keep the strain on those check lines. Everybody out! Come on there, out! Everybody up top! going, John. It's time to go now, Phillips. You've done your duty. You can do no more. Abandon the cabin. It's everyone for himself. Look after yourselves now. I release you both. God bless you. John! John! <laughs> No use, John. The power's gone. Hey, you! Live and let live, sir! Uh, live and let live! John! John! John!
Mm. It's the end, boys. We've done our duty. We can go now. Komm doch schon, wein nicht! Otto! Aren't you going to try for it, Mr. Andrews? What are you doing here? I want my mummy. Oh, then we'd better go and find her, hadn't we? You come with me.
to say a prayer. Our oh, Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy kingdom come. Thy, kingdom come. thy, kingdom come. thy, thy will be done. Be done. Was for the great deeds of the army, you have to wait for the royal of heaven to fall above a fall. She didn't feel ya. So, so many human and so awful. Oh, God. Power and glory forever and ever. Amen. If we get among that lot, they'll swamp the boat. They'll capsize us. We can't just sit here and do nothing. Come on, girls. Row! I give the orders round here. Don't you know you're speaking to a lady? I know who I'm speaking to, and I'm in command of this boat. You get fresh with me, son. I'll throw you overboard. Come on, row! Now, look here. I tell you, you'll drown the lot of us. This boat's returning to pick up survivors. I'm going to pass some of our passengers over to you. We got no room in here, sir. Rubbish. You've room for about 20 more. Now hold your tongue and do as you're told. Excuse me. Mind your back. Just keep calm. Let me out please. I absolutely I'm refuse. awfully sorry about this. I've had quite enough. Just That's as much right. as I could stand. Well for Next time.
I still say we ought to turn back. We only get swamped. You heard what he said. We ought to try, I reckon. What do you think, sir? We're crowded enough as it is. I'm feeling most unwell. It's difficult to say. Only one of us is a seaman. I think we ought to take his advice. Well, perhaps if we wait a bit, uh, until things are quietened down, and then... Well, then we can try. Wait until they're half dead, you mean? That won't take long in this cold. big steamer that was out there, sir. The one that was firing rockets. What about it? Well, she seems to have gone now, sir. Seems to have gone now. And she didn't fire any more rockets. No, sir. Very well. What's the time? 2.45, sir. Well, enter it in the log. Aye, aye, sir. if we don't get organized. It's every man for himself. Shut up and do what the officer says. Here, here. Is that you, Sparks? Yes, sir. Good. How long before the Carpathia gets here? An hour or so, sir. Right. There's a bit of a swell getting up. We'll have to trim the boat. Now, listen to me, all of you. Hello. Wait a minute. Hello. Come on, lads. You're all right now. Hello. Give me a hand, Sparks. Hello. 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 Take care of the child. Here. There's one back here dead, sir. Are you certain? We are, sir. Yes, sir. Right. Lower him over the side. Lean left. Lean left. Gently. Gently. 
All right for the baker to come aboard now, sir. Yes, pull him in. In right. Uh -huh. Thank you, sir. I beg your pardon, sir. It's the cold. Look, sir. Go ahead, sir. Right, steady, lad, steady. <whistles> to your right. To your right. To your right. It's an officer's whistle. Make way together, lads. Starboard helm. Uh, to your right, please, madam. My baby. My baby. That man over there, he's smoking a cigarette. I think it's disgraceful that anyone should smoke at a time like this. People really ought to control themselves. I want my husband. I'm so cold. Please, I'm so cold. I'm so cold. Oh. She'll be there by now, sir. Yeah. Not a sign of her. Must have given the wrong position. I spoke on the port bow, sir. Starboard point. Starboard one point, sir. Slow ahead. Slow ahead, sir. Starboard one point. There's a flare ahead, sir. Fire a rocket. Okay. I tell you, we're done. Oh, oh, shut up. No water, no food. Got no compass, no chart. That's the North Star up there, isn't it? What's the use of that? We're hundreds of miles from land. What was that? All in star, flash your lightning. Lightning my foot? That was a rocket. Look! It's a rocket. It's a rocket. Pat, will you look? There's a ship sending up a rocket. Down. Please, ladies, sit down. You may lose your balance. We'll give them an answer. There. Look. There. They'll see this. There's a ship coming. She's firing rockets. Oh. Wait, wait, wait. Ah, come on now, brace up. It'll not be much longer. Oh, look at them rockets. Look at them lovely rockets. Let be the Carpathia. Aren't you glad to see her? Yes, I'm glad. But then I'm still alive. If only she'd been nearer. There are quite a lot of ifs about it, aren't there, Colonel? Keep up, Quartermaster! Keep that line slack! If we'd been steaming a few knots slower, or if we'd sighted that berg a few seconds earlier, we might not even have struck. If we carried enough lifeboats for the size of the ship instead of just enough to meet the regulations, things would have been different again, wouldn't they? Maybe. But you have nothing to reproach yourself with. You've done all any man could and more. You're not... I was going to say, you're not God, Mr. Lightoller. No seaman ever thinks he is. I've been at sea since I was a boy. I've been in sail. I've even been shipwrecked before. I know what the sea can do, but this is different. Because we hit an iceberg? No. Because we were so sure. Because even though it's happened, it's still unbelievable. I don't think I'll ever feel sure again about anything. God, 
Father of all mercies, we, thine unworthy servants, do give thee most humble and hearty thanks for all thy goodness and loving kindness to us and to all men, particularly to those who desire now to offer up their praises and thanksgivings for thy late services vouchsafed unto them. We bless thee for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life. But above all, for thine inestimable love in the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we beseech thee, give us that due sense of all thy mercies, that our hearts may be unfeignedly thankful and that we show forth thy praise not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to thy service and by walking before thee in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with thee and the Holy Ghost be all honor and glory, world without end. Amen. Amen. Sir? We're at the place now. I thought you'd like to see for yourself. Oh, yes, sir. Thank you, sir. We only found one body, I'm afraid. The rest must have been carried further on by the current. But, of course, we'll go on searching for survivors until we turn back to New York. Yes, sir. How many? Well, the purser's checked the figures now. We have on board 705 survivors. Several of those in the boats were dead, I'm afraid. 1,500 lost? That's right, yes. Excuse me, sir. Oh, Cottom, yes, what is it? A message from the Californian, sir. She's nearby. Just heard about the Titanic. Wants to know if there's anything she can do. Tell them no, nothing. Everything that was humanly possible has been done. <laughs> 